Hi there, and welcome to episode 83 of the Couples Expert Podcast. This is Stuart Fensterheim. I'm amazed that this is the 83rd episode that I've done. It's so incredibly exciting. 83 episodes, 83 content that I've been able to get out to couples for them to really understand that going from a relationship that may be struggling or may be okay even to having an incredibly great relationship, one that makes you feel loved and important and gives you strength in this world. That's really what we're looking for, isn't it? To have a relationship in which both of you feel connected, loved, and that you're in a relationship where you could be yourself authentic with your partner. And what's better than today to start that process? If this is your first podcast listening to my Couples Expert podcast, I welcome you. If this is the 83rd podcast, I really encourage you to share that message, telling people that we're out here and we want to help you have a relationship that's meaningful. This week, we're going to do something a little different. Next week, or on Monday, it is the dreaded Halloween. Halloween is that time of year. We spook each other, but what we don't want to have happen is to spook you into having a divorce. Because spooking someone, freaking yourself out, freaking your partner out to a place where you don't know what's going on, there is nothing scarier, nothing more intimidating and nothing that will cause you to scream and run away as fast as a relationship that's not working. That is frightening, especially if you keep going back and doing the same things over and over like a record. Some of you may not even remember records. I sure do at 61. But records are the vinyl things that would go around and round. And what was really interesting about records is you needed a needle. Yes, you did. With an arm that would run around the record and play the music that way. That needle, though, sometimes got dull. It skipped. So in the middle of a song, it would boop and skip away. And sometimes it got so locked in there that it would play the same tone over and over and over and over again, and that would drive us crazy. However, some of you out there might remember, because for me, we had eight tracks. It was so big and bulky, and it didn't do a good job, not as good as what we have now, but that's what happens. We get to a point where both partners have memorized that conversation, and it plays over and over and over in your head, the same way the record would play over and over again. But what we need is we need to understand that we have to break out of that pattern. And couples become frustrated and disappointed and assume something was going to happen. It's like going into a haunted house. When we go into a haunted house, you walk in knowing what's going to happen. Behind every corner will be the next monster. And when you get around the corner, you're anticipating it, and you get yourself locked up, ready for some creature to jump out at you, and then you laugh. But in a relationship, that creature, that scary thing, is the two of you. And it's not very funny. And we don't laugh about it because we assume that our partners are there to freak us out and to have us live a life that's empty and alone, and this negative pattern causes us to lose that attachment and connection that we have with one another. So what we want to do is understand that part of our relationship that spooks us. How we do that is having the tools to fix it. We have to fix a broken relationship. It makes us all, when it's not working, throw our hands up and say, I give up. Because we're so spooked, all we want to do is just get away. It's a fight or flight. 
If you see something scary, you jump away, you protect yourself, and you move on. Think about this. Have you ever seen like a black cat at night or a horse get spooked? Do you know what they do? They get tense and anxious, and then they look very intently at what's spooking them. You know, those eyes that you see sometimes, the black eyes that's staring at you, just like those spiders that people have on their walls right now. Those spiders that you look at it and you just get freaked out because what it says to you is there's danger. That danger then puts us in a fright place where we freeze or flee. And most of us freeze, but then we do flee internally. What the cats do or what people do, they jump up and then they run away. You don't hang out to get yourself hurt. You want to get away as fast as you can. Some of us get away by pulling away, withdrawing, and some of us go internalized. We internalize this. We know this is unsafe and that the best answer is to keep our mouths closed and not say a thing. And then our partners don't understand what's happening. And what happens is we get caught up in these cycles. If you go to Sue Johnson, who wrote a book called Hold Me Tight, it's a wonderful book out there, and you can get it at Amazon or pretty much anywhere. If you go to the book, it does a really good job talking about different demon dialogues, different dialogues that help us really see our cycle in such a clear way. And when the two of you can see it the same way, spooking doesn't happen because it becomes understandable and we understand what's happening. The only problem for most of us is we don't agree so that if the two of you look at the situation and say, yes, that's us, yes, that's what we do. When we see the same thing spooking us, we then begin to work toward together to fight the devil, to fight Frankenstein, to fight the demons that cause the two of you to pull away, move away from one each other, and not work as partners. Because the more you can stay close and connected, the more you need to stay together and work as a united front against anything that might pull you apart. And what's so sad is some people get to a place where they get so spooked, they start thinking about separation. They start thinking, oh, I should go see a lawyer. Oh my God, we never did a prenuptial. We need to get one right now. Because if I don't, I know she'll take me to the cleaners. I know he'll take advantage of me and leave me penniless. Think about it. What you're really saying is the person who you've chosen to build a life with is going to harm you, is going to not care what happens to you. The sad part, and what I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, is divorce is never an option. Divorce does never have to happen to anyone out there. If the two of you are committed to make this relationship work with all the things we now know, there's no question in my mind that you can have what you're looking for, which is a marriage, a relationship, a partnership with the person lying next to you who's so committed to making sure that you have a life of joy and happiness and fulfillment and that they are the catalyst for it. The answer to the problem is within the power of the research that we now know regarding love and relationships that can help couples go from a feeling of disconnection to a feeling like you are that with that one person that loves you the most. You know, it reminds me of a quote. I want to just sort of talk about this a second. There's a quote that I, that I recall seeing, and it goes like this. A successful marriage requires falling in love many times 
but always with the same person. And if you go to a website called thehappywivesclub.com, a, a person by the name of Mignon McLaughlin, that's her quote. And it really is about falling in love over and over again with the same person, our partner, every single day. You know, we know the best parts of our partner. We also know the worst parts. And if this is a truly authentic relationship, your partner is very willing to show you those things. And the reason they are is what they know is that they can trust that even within those areas, the things that even we don't like about ourselves, we can show those to our partner and believe without any question, and that's the key, without any question, that it doesn't change how they feel about us, for some folks, it actually is the thing that they love the most about us because they love the fact that they see all of you and that there isn't any need to read each other's mind or to do anything other than to just be present with you. You see, it goes back to my mission. The mission of this podcast is really about a passion that I have for saving relationships to really help people learn how to fix what's broken, erase the old tapes, record, or digitize, now with digital discs, new ones that those are the things that will play out over and over again in your heads. I help couples recover from their past hurts, learn to forgive and heal, and I am passionate about teaching you how to put those negative patterns behind you and start fresh creating a kind of relationship you've always dreamed about. And you could have that with the person lying right next to you. And we together are on a journey to aid every single couple throughout the world to have that kind of relationship. And if you are listening to this podcast and say, well, you know, my relationship's pretty darn good, that's okay. I can offer and we can talk about how do you go from that to special and great? You know, next I want to talk about next week's podcast before we continue. Next week, uh, I'm excited. Uh, I've been talking with this gentleman for a while now, Robert Cox. Robert is a friend of mine who his specialty is working with couples and substance abuse. Substance abuse is an interesting, it's the probably one of the more invasive things that can interfere with being able to take the research that we have and use it in your relationship to have it work because it trumps everything. And that's not a comment about Donald. That's a comment about trumping, meaning it will overshadow everything we do. And so many of us struggle with this. And I want to really offer this to all of you. So please, Tell people to tune in because he's going to share with us how to have a relationship that's so close and overcome substance abuse as that challenge. Uh, today, the topic is don't let the marriage spook you into a divorce. And so what we're going to talk about next is what if you're already at a place where you're separated? What happens then? What do we need to do? So that really means the following. If you've been freaked out and spooked enough, so you didn't see any other choices for yourself but leaving, running away, then you will believe that your relationship is heading toward disaster with your partner. The disaster is unbearable because you feel like nothing will solve this problem but not being together. So you make the decision to separate or you may be listening to this already separated. So this topic is really for all of you out there that may have made this decision not because you didn't care, but you didn't see any choice for yourself. And the saddest part about that is you probably have spent a lot of time lying to yourself thinking that this is the only answer that will solve the problem. What we don't realize is that we are lying to ourselves. We see it as 
this is the only solution to the problem. It's the easier route to get back to where we would like to be, which is feeling that our partner cares about us and that we're able to be in a relationship with them and have ourselves feel loved and important. The problem is that we don't give ourselves any more room for growth. What that means is, if you're going to separate, and the separation is not just a prelude to divorce, but the separation is about taking a look at your relationship and wondering if it's going to work again, you're not able to do that separated because all you have is the information that you already have. So what that really means is that if you don't feel loved, there's nothing that's going to change that perspective because most of us don't spend enough time with our partners by themselves, particularly if we have children, assessing whether or not there's been change. What you end up doing is rehashing and remembering all the pain and anguish that you've already been through. So you might as well just divorce because you're not going to be working toward making any changes. You may talk with your partner about the changes that you need, but you're really not going to be able to experience them any different than you already have. So what we really end up doing is reflecting on that loneliness and emptiness that we've already experienced. So if you've been hurt emotionally and can't reason things out, so you decide to live elsewhere, that distance doesn't allow you to feel something different than you already do. So what I would recommend is that you, if need to be in a different space, so not on top of each other, you need to move into another bedroom or move out of the room so the two of you are not in this together, but that the two of you then begin to put into place a specific plan on how you're going to change your interactions. One way of doing this, because we all get caught up in interpreting our partners in particular ways. So what you may want to do is go to something like a hold me tight weekend or one of my two days and seven conversation weekends, which I hold every month, to really look at the cycles that are being created. What you have to do is begin to change the way that you see each other. The only way that will happen is when you begin to experience your partner differently than you already thought, so that you begin to question your own assumptions. So going away for a weekend or a week or somewhere else where you feel safe and be not being hurt without the outside influence of your partner doesn't do it because you need the interaction so that you're able to stand back and say, what I believed before, I now see I have to question whether or not my perspective is accurate. So you have to be able to have conversations that are very vulnerable, that are very authentic, that will allow you to not have pressure to making a choice of whether or not to be with them or not, that gives the two of you the time so that you can begin to really understand that your partner is there for you, that your partner has your back, that you see your partner in a very different way than you ever have. This is the time that I would highly recommend that you do some internal reflecting because we have a tendency to really blame the other person. That what we need to do is look inwardly, look at our role, the role that we play to that gets in the way of our relationship being one that's loving and caring and that we perceive our partners in the worst way possible. That's what we know. We know that when we're triggered, we think about our partners in the worst way possible. We think about our relationship in the worst way possible. And nothing will reinforce more that the two of you should not be together than you believing something is a fact 
because you feel like you know your partner that well, and the reality is you don't because no one talks to our partner in a vulnerable, authentic way when we don't feel safe. The partner will perceive us in a positive way. If you believe that your partner will perceive you negatively, we're not going to add fuel to the fire. So our fears get in the way. What we need to do is stop ourselves from looking outward, and we look inward and ask yourself, if you're one of these people who are frozen in a glacier, what would it take to thaw you out? Going to Arizona, where it was 90 yesterday, in August might be pretty good at 120 degrees. You may thaw out, but we don't want to just melt like the Wicked Witch of the West. We want to be thawed out and allow ourselves to begin to see our partner in a loving, caring way so that we step back, we want to avoid the choices that we've made so far, and we want to move into believing our partners care about us. And what we need to do that is new experiences. Experiences where you see your partner not as critical, not as unloving, not as uncaring, not as incapable of loving someone, but we believe very much that this person sees you as the best thing that happened to them since sliced bread. And if you can do that, miracles can happen. So when you're separated, or if you already are separated, this is the work that you have to do. And as you could see from what we're talking about it, it takes a lot of focus on reshaping your thoughts, your feelings, and your assumptions. And it truthfully, if you're living apart, it takes a stronger commitment to spending time together. You have to spend hours and hours with someone in order to really have those kinds of experiences. You need to have the time when the children are there, when the children aren't there. There isn't really any time that you're free that you can't make the choice to spend with your family and your the children and your your partner because you need to see them at all different times. And not just one time where the, the trigger comes up and you, you repeat the same cycle and say, oh, I know that that's what's going on. You have to be able to stand back and see it for what it is, which is a trigger that's based on fear, fear of not being close. So... In order to do that, you have to have an incredible amount of patience and skill that most couples don't have. So what I really truly believe is that if you two are in a relationship that is one where there's a separation or talk of separation, there is no way I believe that you can do it without seeing a counselor and without really having someone intervene to help the two of you see what's really going on in front of you. But how do you do that? We have to find a couples counselor now. So, oh my gosh, how do we know who to go to, who would be the right person, who would take my needs into consideration? So what we have to do, truthfully, what you have to do then is find someone that is really highly skilled at this, not just somebody who's hanging up a shingle and said, oh, by the way, I do couples counseling now. Unless this person is someone that has advanced training in understanding the current state of love and relationships with all the latest research, you're going to put yourself in a situation where the counselor also is caught up in the same cycle that the two of you are. So what we have to do is really find someone that is based with an attachment model. We have to have someone who could stand back, identify the cycles, and help you to really truly have an emotional safe place, meaning the office, where they can help you identify the cycles and see it the same way. Many people who are counselors that are really highly skilled as individual counselors don't understand this. And if you're seeing a counselor for yourself, this is the way that I would be thinking about it. If you are looking for someone the first question you want to ask is, what percent of your practice is couples? 
if they don't tell you up and beyond 50% of what they do every single day are couples, they're not the people to see. Run, do not walk, away. Now, the other question you want to ask them is, do they work in an attachment-based model? If they don't understand what that means, run, do not walk away. Now, I'm not saying they're bad counselors. I'm just saying that what we know with all the research is that an attachment-based model such as emotionally focused therapy or the Gottman method, those are two big ones out there, and it's easy to find people like that, go to their websites, and they usually have referral lists. Um, you want someone that is trained in those two models, which is the two that I know. There may be others out there, but I want you to really ask, do you know the Gottman method? Do you know emotionally focused therapy? And if you don't, do you use something else that is focused on an attachment model? Because our attachments is what we're talking about. So we want for you to see someone who you're going to get accurate information. I really hope this doesn't sound critical of other counselors, because I'm not saying they're not any good. What I'm saying is being a couples counselor, and this is what we hear and what I've heard for years, it's something you either love or you don't want to even go anywhere near it. And if you're not someone that loves working with couples, why see someone like that? So you really want someone who has got tremendous experience and tremendous backing for someone that sees couples counselors. Because what we need to do is rebuild your relationship by creating a relationship that you've always dreamed of. So if there is a relationship that you don't currently have, you have to believe it's possible to get there. And unless you have a clear sense of how you're going to do it, you're not going to believe it. It has to be a step-by-step -step where someone can show you clearly the method that you're using counselor should be very authentic and transparent and someone who's going to help you every step of the way believe that where you're headed is a reality and let your partner also see for themselves through your eyes or their eyes. You want to find the things about your partner that you love and show those to him that why you fell in love with your partner is because they were real, they were alongside of you, and the two of you were having a relationship where you're in this together. That's what we all want. We want someone who has our back. And to do that, you have to be willing to be vulnerable and show your partner who you truly are. Let go of the past hurts, guys. Tear down those walls. Don't keep building a wall and protecting yourself from the people in your life who love you. Be real, be authentic, and come from a place of love. And really make sure that the love that you have is about loving your partner for who they are, not what you hope they will be. Because the needs that we all have of feeling loved have to be the place that you connect with your partner and help you really see your partner as the most precious thing in your life and that you want to be with that person, not your children, not your lifestyle, but this one individual makes you feel loved and cared about and nothing makes you happier than being with them. All right, I want everyone taking a deep breath because getting spooked on Halloween or getting spooked about your relationship can really take your breath away and have you feeling really overwhelmed and negative. I don't want anyone listening to this to blame, not only don't blame your partner, but some of you may be sitting there going, I really screwed up. I really made some huge mistakes here. Self-blame is as bad as blaming the other. There is no need to blame anyone. The two of you have to be a team where you're in this together. You know, when, before I go on and sort of close out here, 
I'd like to remind all of you that I have a YouTube channel called The Couples Expert. The Couples Expert YouTube channel has videos on a variety of relationship topics. And what I do is I do something called Three Minutes with Stuart. I bring these to you and to all of you with the hope that it will help you navigate the ups and downs of the relationships in your life. Not everyone needs counseling. I'm not a counselor that tries to says, oh, you need to be in this. You need to pick everyone off the street and say you're in it. What I want to do is give you the tips that you need because some of you, all you need is a reminder. And it's my way of giving you a gentle, light-hearted reminder of what it takes to have that kind of relationship. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking on the link in the show notes or going to my YouTube channel and doing a search for the Couples Expert YouTube channel. And I, uh, about once a week, I give away uh, a free PDF of some sort or something that will help keep you guys on top of all of this. So what we want to do with this is really celebrate our relationship every single day of your life together. And it's about really making it real and thanking our partners for small things, whether it's a great meal that they cook, the shirt that they wear that looks good, or the way your partner hair smells. You want to let them know this. You want to let them know that you really appreciate every single day the little things that they do, along with the big things and the anniversaries and everything, Take time to notice the little things. The more positive comments you make with your partner, the stronger your bond will become. The more you can celebrate each other that you're in each other's life, the happier you're going to be too. And this time of year with all the holidays coming up and everything, it's really a fun time to celebrate each other and yourselves as a couple. Halloween, for example, is a great time to dress up, do some things that really are fun. What's more important than having fun in your relationship? Be a king and his queen, a fork and a spoon, peanut butter and jelly. How's that? Or some of the ideas is things like um, what my wife and I, I think, are going to do is I'm going to be a vampire and she'll be, I think, a witch this year. And we always make it a point to sit outside and give out candy to the kids And really have fun. And I'll probably, knowing me, I probably will videotape a little bit of that and put it on my Facebook uh, page or uh, post it maybe in these show notes or whatever. And what we want to do is really recognize the biggest gift that we can give our partner is us, our love. That we send them the message of how important they are. That they really are precious to us and they make our life better than anything or any gift that can be. So when the holidays approach this time of year and we know that the year's about to end, we make New Year's resolutions, we have Christmas and Hanukkah and all those things, what we want to do is just take time to carve out just for the two of you to be romantic, pay attention to each other every single day exclusively, integrating your life with your partner The holiday times are just great times to just make memories for one another and making sure that the two of you really know that the life you have is about the time that you share and the memories you you give to each other. I want to conclude with this, just an acknowledgement how hard and challenging it can be to be in a long-term relationship. It's hard, but not too hard. It's not easy, but I wouldn't say it's difficult. If you follow the path that we now know of how to help couples, it will allow you to have such a strong connection where you know that you're the most important person in your partner's life, that you'll feel secure, you won't get spooked, you won't come from a place where you see yourself in your life as not being able to be with the person in your life that you committed to. And that you want to have it be something where divorce is not even something you think about. That divorce is the spooky place, is the place that you want to just run from. That you and your partner, to make that commitment that 
that isn't even something you consider ever, nor talk about it, because your commitment is to each other. And that if that fear comes smashing into you, that that's something that you will raise your ugly head and say, I'm scared, things aren't working, and I know you're there for me, so let's work together to really have a relationship that doesn't have any ghouls and goblins and things that invade our brains to have us to lie to ourselves and say that nothing else can help because we know that divorce is never necessary. Get the help you need. Find your way back to each other so you can have and create that relationship that you've always dreamed of with the person you love most. What I'd like to close with is just thanking all of you for coming and joining me today for our chat and just remind you that I offer a free 30-minute no-obligation consultation. If any of you struggle with any of these issues and you'd like to see if my approach would help you, please know that you can always sign up on my website, which is www.thecouplesexpertscottsdale.com, and click on the link that's about the free 30-minute consult, and myself and my associate, Lisa, will get hold of you, schedule that, and we can talk about how we can all work together to have that relationship that will last your lifetime. But for now, it's Stuart Fensterheim, the couple's expert. And until next time, stay connected. Talk to you later. Bye.